Hello everyone and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. Today we're going to be starting on unit number two which is population. When we talk about population, the study of population, uh, the study of that that we refer to is what's called demography. So whenever we talk about population, population studies, uh, this is going to be the study of demography. And when we talk about uh, the study of demography, really we're going to be looking at a couple of different things. Uh, number one, we can be looking at the spatial distribution of population around the world. Uh, and not just spatial distribution, where are people located, uh, but we can also talk about what is the composition of that particular population. So we can talk about uh, males and females, number of children, uh, we can be talking about the number of births, we can be talking about uh, deaths of the population, uh, really anything that involves uh, the study of those population numbers. So really looking at population numbers, growth, decline, uh, and then also uh, where are people located? Uh, that's going to be really important because if we see that people are located in a place, we know that they've gone there for a particular reason uh, and it's something that's going to be drawing them to that particular place. Uh, and we'll look more at that more at that as we go throughout the unit. And then we're also going to be looking at movement, the movement of the population. Where is it that people are going uh, as they move from place to place, whether it's uh, something uh, that's local, maybe it's an interregional movement, maybe it's an international movement. Uh, where is it that people are going? And then, of course, asking, our que asking the question, well, why is it that they're going to that particular place? So as we go through our population unit, these are really uh, the two main things we'll be looking at. We'll be looking at spatial distribution, population composition, and then also uh, the movement of people around the world. Now, when we uh, study population, just like we talked in our last unit, Unit 1, uh, the scale of inquiry is going to be very important. And we're going to be looking really uh, at several different scales of inquiry. Uh, because as we look at the global, if we look at the global uh, population numbers, if we look at international population numbers, maybe we're looking uh, more regional uh, on different continents and things. If we just look at the national, or if we look at the local scales, all of these are going to give us different numbers and different ideas of what's going on. Uh, currently, we see a global trend of, of population growth, and that's why people have been talking uh, for the last couple of years that you know population might peak out somewhere around 9 billion people and maybe decline if we continue on the trend that we're on. But if we don't and we continue on past 9 billion, then a lot of people are concerned about what would happen to the Earth and the resources on the Earth, so forth and so on. But if we look at, uh, if we look at a specific place in the world, parts of Europe, uh, not, not necessarily the United States, but mainly parts of Western and Eastern Europe, we see uh, slower population growth and even some places in population decline, like Japan. Um, and so just because the, uh, on the global scale we have population growth doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have the same thing happening in, uh, in every single country across the world. Same thing with uh, the movement of people and migration. Uh, you know, we could look at uh, where are people moving from specific regions. Uh, and if we look at the reg regional movement, that's going to tell us one thing. But then if we look at uh, some more local or international movement, those are going to tell us some other things. So... Remember, scale of inquiry is incredibly important uh, in order for us to better understand what exactly it is uh, that we are looking at. Now, when we look at current global trends, and right now we're going to be talking about uh, population, population growth. Uh, one of the things that we find uh, is that when we're looking at uh, where is population currently growing the fastest and also the slowest, um, we're going to ask ourselves these questions mainly because we want to identify the areas that we're having trouble. Uh, whether population is growing too fast or too slowly, and when I say too slowly, really more, more along the lines of population decline. Uh, steady population uh, growth, of a, well I guess it wouldn't be growth, it would be zero population growth, uh, really doesn't pose as much of a problem, but when we see population in too much of a decline, or growing too quickly that either of those can pose problems, which we'll really talk more about uh, as we go throughout, uh, go throughout the unit. Some of the places where we see some of the greatest problems today uh, are some of the areas where we see the fastest population growth. And the reason that that's a problem is because this is really taking place in some of the poorest regions in the world, uh, mainly in certain portions of Africa and Asia. Now, the reason that it's a problem that population growth is happening so quickly in these poor countries is because these are the places in the world that are least able to take care of larger population growth. It's not just that the people themselves typically tend to be poor, but also the governments tend to be poor, uh, which means that the government has a hard time providing services to the people, uh, whether it be uh, me adequate medical infrastructure or things such as uh, clean drinking water through, uh, through um, 
through those types of infrastructures. Uh, right now we see the Ebola virus breaking out in West Africa and there's a tremendous amount of difficulty that's taking place there. Uh, and then in a lot of these areas, especially in Africa, what we're seeing is because of, uh, because of illnesses like AIDS, because of things like Ebola, a lot of times killing off some of the, uh, the middle-aged population, a lot of children are left to fend for themselves. So not only does that put a tremendous strain um, on society at large, but also puts a tremendous strain on government, uh, which has a hard time dealing with these things. So when we look at that, uh, that's really going to—that's uh, really one of the reasons why we want to focus on particular areas because not only do we want to identify the areas where we're having trouble, but then once we've identified those places that we're having trouble, uh, we want to—we uh, want to see well what is it that we can do in order to <clears throat> in order to try and alleviate some of those problems. And to kind of give you an idea of some of these numbers, I pulled up the uh, International Monetary Fund website. Uh, and you can see some of the things that are going on around the world and uh, this is going to be based on uh, the 2013 numbers and this is population growth. This is just the international, no sorry, this isn't the International Monetary Fund, it's the World Bank, I apologize. Uh, but anyway, so you can see the population growth. So we have, uh, we, we range from as low as negative 1.1% growth in Lithuania all the way up to a population growth of uh, 9.2 in Oman. Okay, and then down to 5.6 in Qatar, uh, and then on down the line. So you can see that, and you can see, if I scroll up, you can see a lot of these countries where the highest population growths happen to be, uh, and it's in a lot of those poor countries around the world. And as we were talking a lot about in our last unit, we can look at, we can look at a map to kind of display some of the same information. If you remember from our last unit, this is what we call a core plot map. You see how the different countries are shaded in, uh, in order to uh, to show you the uh, the statistic, and so here we're talking about population growth from negative four percent to fourteen percent, and of course I can I can take my scale in. Sorry, create a larger scale so I can zoom in on the countries and I can compare across the different countries. This one doesn't necessarily have anything that pops up and tells you a particular percentage, but you can see based upon the shading of the colors which countries uh, have uh, have higher and lower population growths. Then if you look over here to the left, then this is pretty neat because you can begin to look at some different statistics. Uh, another statistic we look at is what's called the fertility rate, uh, talking about the uh, average number of children per woman uh, that a woman might expect to have in a particular country. So we'll click on that real quick and um, we'll see what that looks like because this might be kind of telling. Uh, you notice that the countries there that have high growth are also going to have high total fertility rates. So you can see where some of the highest, I guess this is, let's see. see what some of the places in the world that are going to have some of the highest fertility rates again are also going to be some of those poor. So you see we have a low of 1.1 of in Macau in China all the way up to a high of 7.6 in Niger. Okay, uh, so anyway that just gives you a look at some of that, the, those statistics and data. So that's just a brief introduction on population, uh, just kind of an idea of what it is that we'll be studying, uh, some of the problem areas in the world when we look at population growth, especially those that are growing very quickly. Uh, you saw there the statistics given to you by the World Bank. Uh, so hopefully you find that helpful. Uh, we'll continue on with our, in our next video with some population numbers.